lecture in uh, third video and risk. And we will move forward right now into our new part. So the attitudes towards the risk. What are the attitudes that we uh, should be towards the risk? Different organization will have different attitudes to risk. Uh, how we will deal with the risk, the meaning of attitudes to risk, that how we how companies behave or react regarding the risk. Some organizations may have be considered to be risk averse, while others will be risk aggressive. So I want you to hit to these two words, risk averse and risk aggressive. Risk averse means that you avoid the risk, while risk aggressive means that you go, you proceed and a risky projects. To some extent, the attitude of the organization's risk will depend on the sector and the nature and the maturity of the marketplace within which it operates. So those are the factors which will, our attitudes toward the risk or how we will behave toward the risk. So the attitudes of the organization to risk will depend on what, depend on what, the attitudes, will depend on the sector, the sector itself, which sector of industry you are working in. The nature and maturity of the marketplace, nature and maturity of the marketplace, how the marketplace is, how it is, is it uh, the circumstance, the economic circumstances are okay? Are we in inflation? Are we in uh, recession? All this would affect within which it operates as well as the attitudes of the individual's board members. Control risk are the most difficult to identify and define, but are often associated with the projects. I want you to know that the over intention of a project is to deliver the desired documents or the desired outcomes, sorry, the desired outcomes on time with budget and to specification and quality or performance. So here, uh, what we want to say in the previous page that the attitudes of the risks depend upon the like uh, the sector of industry, the nature and maturity of the marketplace and which it operates in as well as the attitudes of the individual board members and the individuals. How the individuals see the risk? Uh, the traits of the individuals or the persons who are making or taking the decisions they would like to be uh, take risk projects or they don't like to take the risk projects in concern. Are they are risk aggressive or are they are risk neutral or are they are risk uh, averse? So what kind of they are in? What, what type category of people or individuals they are in? Uh, probably we'll stop here now and we'll take our first question. And today, this will be our first question today. What are the factors that affect upon the attitude risk. What are the factors that affect upon the attitudes to risk? And this is our first question today. And I just want you guys to uh, answer it. And like I showed you here, the answer in the red, in the red points, the attitudes depend on the sector of the economy in which you are working, the nature and the maturity of the marketplace, and the nature of the individuals or the people who are working on this type of risk. So these are the three points which I want you to uh, work on it right now. And that will also be um, the answer of the question. Those red in red, the piece, the words in red, is the answer of the attitudes to risk. And here I put the question and I will stop here like around uh, four minutes for you to take your notes and write it down 
about the uh, type of risk like here. So please write it down in your notes. What are the factors that affect upon uh, the attitude to risk? We'll stay here around three to four minutes. Thank you. We'll go now to move to the next slides, which is about after the attitude to risk. We've answered this question already. What are the factors that affect the attitude to risk? What are the factors that affect attitude to risk? We'll go now to control risk. What do we mean by risk control or control risk are the most difficult to identify and define, but are often associated with projects. The overall intention of a project is to deliver the desired outcomes on time with budget and to specify uh, specifications and quality with a high quality. So usually when we do our projects, our main task is to deliver it at the right time and the right place with the right required uh, quality. So this is the meaning of control risk. So that's what we do. So we care about in the control risk is to control the risk so that we don't go in a problem with these objectives because all our overall intention is to deliver the uh, desired outcomes on time within a budget means with the lowest cost and with the highest quality. So based on the circumstances which we have, we work on the circumstances which we have so that is how it works or that's what we do based on the circumstance so what i mean here 
is like I will do just now. I just want to enlarge this paragraph like that way. So it will be shown up to you guys. The uncertainty. Uncertainty means you know, don't know the circumstances in the market, how it looks like. These risks should be considered to be control risks. And the overall management of the project should take account on the uncertainty. Uncertainty is not fun. It's very serious. Because in the uncertainty situations, you don't know what will happen because you don't have enough data. You don't have enough data regarding the future. So you don't know what will happen, what uh, kind of risk or what kind of hazards will happen in the future. So in that case, you have to deal with it, not to wait, just to put your hand on your cheek and wait till, you, uh, till a problem happen. No, I should do uh, many scenarios or many plans. In case this uh, situation or event A happened, I will act with plan A. In case uh, the situation B happened or the event B happened, I will act with plan B and so on. So you, you deal based on this actually. Okay, associated with these different types of risk, it would be unrealistic for the project manager to assume that only adverse aspects of the ground conditions will be discovered. So it means that you won't be able to discover all the variables or the changes regarding the uncertainty situation. Uncertainty situation. It's very hard to catch all the variables which should have. As example, let us say today you plan, you put a plan that the cement is, as example, $1,000 for one ton. That's fine. But you don't know what will happen after two or three years, would it be the same price? Okay, you are going now for a bid to build a hospital. You are a contractor or a developer and you are going to build an, a, a high rise. And your plan is you will not of course finish this building in one week. It needs three, four years to be done. So are you sure about the price of the cement after four years, how it will be like? Totally. No, because after four years, I will be in uncertainty. The time, the more the time, the higher the risk. And the uncertainty is the highest levels of risk. Uh, so you won't be able, like here, what he said, that the project manager will be able to catch all the circumstances around it. It would be unwise for the project manager to assume that conditions will be better than expected. Never, never. Never be dreamy, never be dreamy. Don't, don't think that the upcoming is better than now. This is the point or that uh, your expectations, you will achieve all your expectations in the uncertainty situation. No, you won't be able to do this. It's not that easy because future is unknown. And this is the point. Likewise, it would be unwise that the project manager to assume that conditions will be better than expected just because he or she wants uh, that to be the case, or I will just imagine, I will impose my ideas. I will say, here it is, and that's the way it will be. No, you have to put different scenarios and different situations to deal with the risk, to deal with the risk situation. One of the tools for representing risk management activities that has recently been developed uh, is we call it the bow tie. The bow tie as a, 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 a representation of the risk management process is used several times throughout this book. Uh, the figure here show, figure here, the figure which is coming in the upcoming page, show our figure below, I will write here figure below. Shows a simple representation of the bow tie uh, applicable to events that can cause disruption to normal efficient operations. This uh, here is the bow tie. So we have 
the source, disruptive events, and the bow tie. These are the sources of the reasons, these are the categories, and this is the impact or the effect, where it will impact. So strategic and tactical and operation and compliances, the impact will come to finance, infrastructure, reputational and marketplace. The categories are the people, the premises. So as example, for the infrastructure, the, 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 the premises, uh, the products for the marketplace and so on. This is the disruption, disruption in one of those four things. In people, uh, premises, something will happen. And we have for that to plan strategic, tactical, operational, and compliance to put all this in together. So these are various risk analysis techniques available. The most popular method of analyzing risk is using a bow tie. A bow tie is a simple way of analyzing a risk to gain greater understanding. The first stage is to put the risk description into the middle box. So the risk description in the middle box, here is the middle box. Let's go to the middle box again. Here is the middle box. Okay, this to put the risk description in the middle box. Okay, a bow tie is analyzing risk gain understanding. The first stage is to put the risk description into the middle box. The cause of the risk then need to be recorded. What is the reason of the risk? Along with the preventive controls to stop the risk. So I will get the reason and I will get the remedy or how to stop it. So I will have the reason for the risk and I will have also how to stop this risk. Uh, the impact of the risk is also considered. So even you cannot prevent the risk 100%, but still there is a level of risk. This enables the identification of the response controls to listen the impact of the risk should it occur. So once we put the plan, we put the plan, then we can handle this risk and reduce the losses to its lowest level. So here is an example. <coughs> it show you the bow tie with an example here. Like the sources of risk as example, let's say the faculty electrical equipment, uh, unattended uh, cooking. Here, the uh, prevention control goes from the maintenance. So if there is here, uh, the equipments were not done very well. Uh, and there was no someone waiting and sitting. And there was no maintenance programs or whatever. And there was no someone to watch while you're putting the foods on the kitchen, in the kitchen stoves. Then all these will lead to kitchen fire. Then this would be the event. The response control you respond, how, how far you respond? You respond with the fire alarm, the fire alarm. Then you will go for to proceed for the fire extinguishers. Those are the response control. What the impact or the effect? On asset destruction, the asset will be broken. Smokes will come and people will breathe the smokes. Listen, watch that we have people are working in the kitchen. So they will uh, inhale the smoke. And sometimes it might reach to death if we didn't get the people here. So again, this is an example of the bow tie, the bow tie in the risk management. This is simply another example. In the bow tie here, 
we have the sources of risk, which is faculty, electrical or equipment. And we have unattended cooking as example. We have the maintenance, the maintenance and the supervision. We have them here. So this is the source of the risk, the faculty electrical equipment, or someone is not there. Uh, he just put the stoves and on the, uh, he put the pans on the stove and he left. So this is a problem, the preventive control, the preventive of these problems for the maintenance, it helped for the electrical equipment and for the supervision, it will help no one, so not no one, everybody will be watching his work. Supervision will be watching the work. Let's say these are not there. What will happen? Kitchen fire. And the event will be kitchen fire. Okay, that will affect about what? Like you see here. Once this done, there is a fire in the kitchen, then you will look, the fire alarm will work. These are response control tools. Fire alarm will work. Consequently, when fire alarm will work, we will look for the fire extinguishers. But still, we have asset destructions. That means some assets. The value of it has gone down. Smoke inhalation, smoke inhalation, and death. Assets destruction, small inhalations, and death. Those are the three things which will happen in that case. So the source of risk would lead to the impact or the effect. The impact means the effect. We call this bow tie, bow tie. Like I showed you before, we call it a bow tie. So the bow tie again is a simple way to analyzing a risk to again greater understanding. The first stage is to put the risk description into the middle box causes the cause of the risk then need to be recorded along with the preventive controls to stop the risk occurring the impact of the risk is also considered this enables the identification of the response controls to listen to the impacts of their when this problem occur or happen here we go and now i will stop here and put a question about what is the bow uh, the bow tie define control and see, and we'll go to a second question today. Define bow tie. Just one sec. Uh, define bow tie and explain it with the example of yours. So we said here the, the fire extinguishers, and this is the example. And I want you to look for an example of yours right now. So I will stop here uh, for around uh, three or four minutes to put your answer or five minutes to put your answer about the bow tie. And explain it to the example of yours and the example, let me show you the example back here or here, here or here. Source of risk, preventive control, event, response control, and the impact. We call it bow tie or bow tie. Uh, I will stop here like around uh, five minutes for you guys to put the answer, define the bow tie and explain it with examples of your own. Shall stay here like around five minutes, then we'll move forward to the next slide. Thank you so much.
cool, we get back. So once today we have talking about what is the meaning of the hazards and defining the hazard and the relationship between the risk and the return, the more the risk, the more return required. And what are the factors? Sorry about this. What are the factors that affect upon the attitudes to risk? Then define a bow tie and explain what examples with examples of yours. We said the bow tie. This is like here. This is a bow tie. We say the source of risk here. Uh, faulty electrical equipment, uh, attended cooking. And here we have the preventive control, like maintenance or supervision. We have those should prevent this event from happening or fire from happening. However, this is, it leads to a kitchen fire. And the responses control like sensations like the fire alarm. And we will respond also with the fire extinction. So the fire alarm will let us use the know where is the place of the uh, problem and use the fire extinguishers. Then that, of course, as a result of the kitchen fire, that will impact the assets, the assets kitchens, like stoves and all these things that might extend also to other rest of the place. Uh, asset destruction, smoke inhalation, because people will smoke the, the, the fire from the fire. There will be smoke and people might uh, uh, breathe it, and that might cause them uh, problems. And it might also lead to a death of some people uh, due to uh, unable to be breathing. That was what we talk about today. Shall see you in the next video. Thank you.